Welcome to the tutorial on the primary flight display on the Aerosystem 737 avionics package. Down in the bottom left hand corner you'll notice the letters GS which stand for ground speed. The aeroplane isn't moving and so we have a ground speed of zero. Above this is the indicated airspeed tape. You'll notice it says 45. Now this is the minimum speed at which the airspeed indicator is calibrated. So anything below this is an inaccurate reading and therefore we start the speeds at 45 knots. Each increment on this scale is in 10 knots. You'll see the words no V-speed. Now this means that the flight management computer has not been programmed for takeoff and when it is programmed you'll see some green markers here which tell you at which speed to rotate. Above this in magenta is the airspeed that we wish to command the aeroplane to fly. It's saying 100 at the moment and you'll notice below it is the bug which also indicates that 100 is the commanded airspeed. On the top here is the mode control panel or MCP. Notice on this left hand section the 100. So this is where we input the speeds and other values for parts of the primary flight display. Now to change the indicated airspeed look at this window here and divide it down the middle. Click on the left to decrease the numbers, click on the right to increase the numbers. So if I now click on the right, numbers increase, click to the left, numbers decrease. I can also use the mouse wheel to alter those numbers and if I hold down the shift key on the keyboard and use the mouse wheel the numbers change in increments of 10. So let's set this back at 100. You'll notice the bug on the left is moving indicating uh, what we've set up here on the mode control panel. In the center is the attitude display indicator or artificial horizon and uh, one of the most important instruments as you can gather. The sky is blue and the ground is brown. At the top here we have markers for the angle of bank. I'm just going to take the aeroplane up so we can see uh, these markers in more detail. Let's take a look out the front of the aeroplane and that will do, we'll stop it there. So if I turn the aeroplane to the left you'll notice that the attitude indicator is also turning and these increments are in 10 degrees. So at the moment the aeroplane is indicating a 30 degree angle of bank to the left. The next indicator is at 45 degrees and following that is 60 degrees. Now if I continue to rotate the aeroplane when we get to 35 degrees we get a yellow warning indicator showing us that that has exceeded the bank angle of the aeroplane. You'll notice below this little triangle here is a rectangle. That's the slip skid indicator. Now if you're using uh, auto coordination the rudder and ailerons will turn together. If those are disconnected in flight sim when you turn the aeroplane you will need to apply rudder and this rectangular bar underneath will slip either side of the pointer to indicate which direction the rudder needs to be applied. Again we've got pitch very simple to understand at two and a half degree uh, pitch attitude five degree seven and a half degree ten very simple these black bars in the middle here represent the wings and there's also a black dot here in the middle for accuracy while we're up at this uh, altitude you'll notice down the bottom we have a number that says 180 now this is a radar altitude so this is the altitude above ground or water. At the moment it's saying 180 feet. Now we'll just take the aeroplane up a little bit higher and you'll notice that the uh, radar altitude disappears. This is only active from two and a half thousand feet and below. Notice there is a white box surrounding the value here. This will disappear in 10 seconds. That means that that particular function has become active or that indicator has become active. Ten seconds later the box disappears. Okay let's take the aeroplane back down onto the runway now. On the right is the altitude tape. So again we'll start at the bottom here. 1013 hectopascals is the pressure setting for sea level 
at this particular point on the Earth. So sitting on this runway, the pressure is reading 1013 hectopascals. Now if I right click, and the second one down, I can select the US system, and we get 29.92 inches of mercury as the pressure setting. Now I'm in Australia, so I'm going to select the metric system once again. Over here on the left, we have increments of 100 feet. You'll notice that this airport is roughly 22 feet above sea level. I'll just take the aeroplane up slightly. Okay, we can see the numbers start to increase. And this yellow section here indicates the lower limit of the airport that we're taking off from. So if you're taking off from 3,000 feet, this yellow diagonal section will also sit at 3,000 feet. Now we're going up quite slowly now because I want to show you a few other bits and pieces on the uh, altimeter. You'll notice that from this yellow diagonal section is a yellow bar. This yellow bar extends all the way up to 500 feet. From 500 feet, we'll just go a little bit faster now, is a white bar. Now this white bar is indicating that we are close to 500 feet to 1,000 feet. So it's a visual indication that we're getting very close to uh, the ground and where we're going to be landing. So here we are, 1,000 feet, down to 500, and again below. You'll notice when we did actually increase our altitude that the vertical speed indicator here on the right was increasing. We can see we've got a climb of, even though we're going straight up in slew mode, roughly 1,000 feet per minute, which is indicated here. Now this is a non-linear scale, so most of the uh, action happens around this area here, so that's where the indicator is most accurate. Okay, we'll stop the aeroplane there. And you'll notice the numbers have disappeared. If we climb again, the numbers don't come back until 450 feet per minute, either climb or descent. This is a good altitude to show you uh, the altitude bug. You'll notice here the bug here is magenta down the bottom and we only see half of it when it is set lower than the scale. Up the top here is the number 300. Now this is the altitude set up here on the mode control panel at which we want to fly the aeroplane. So I can grab the altitude bug by simply right clicking on this window or left clicking to set the altitude. Now when the mode control panel has been activated and the aeroplane is flying under the command of the mode control panel, this is the altitude that the aeroplane will fly at. Below here we have a compass, fairly simple to understand. We're heading roughly 335 degrees and it's magnetic. You'll notice here on the left uh, 000, and if we take a look at the top of the screen, heading is also 000. Once again, down below is the heading bug in magenta. I can decrease the heading bug and I can increase the heading bug. So let's go ahead and set that to say 340 degrees. So you'll notice a common theme here everything in magenta, the airspeed, the altimeter, and the heading bug is something that is commanded from the mode control panel which is where you set those values. Now in part two of this tutorial I'll be taking a closer look at some of the other indicators on the primary flight display.